hello hello everybody and welcome back to my channel this is Carmen with elemental designs and um, I shared with you guys a couple days ago a haul that I did on, online on eBay and I purchased these um, fufu clocks <laughs> these fufu twin bell clocks um, and today I'm gonna kind of go with you through the process of how I'm gonna alter them as you guys can see I have already taken everything apart there are four screws on the back of um, of the clock that pretty much allow you to start disassembling everything and then there are um, some bolts and nuts in the inside of the clock that you can go ahead and just kind of unscrew um, now all clocks are going to be the same but that's how this one was um, so more or less I'm going to be altering this clock and what you see me doing here is pretty much just getting a feel for the outside um, getting a trace of the actual you know uh, back and front so that I can cover the back up um, and also have a base to start kind of decorating and embellishing um, and things like that. Now, what I've decided to do with this clock is I've decided to reverse it because the front where the glass dome goes is actually a lot smaller than the back. So I'm going to use the back as my front and my front as my back. Um, so to do that, I'm going to have to go ahead and just create a little bit of a base um, to put on the front so that my glass dome will actually fit there nicely because otherwise it'll, it kind of just falls right through because again it's a little bit bigger um so just kind of tracing that and um you know tracing my different elements here i'm going to be gluing uh that little ring that i created that little um chipboard ring that i created i'm going to glue that onto the frame and more or less allow that to kind of set um the glue that i'm using is an embellishing glue uh, make sure that you guys use a good glue when you're doing this um i don't necessarily think that you need like an e6000 or anything like that but definitely use a good glue uh when you're you know putting this whole thing together so i'm using i'm getting my paper from some prima paper pads uh, one of them is romance novel i think that's the one that i end up actually using is the romance novel if i'm not mistaken um but i could be I'm not sure yes uh, I, I went ahead and used the ro the romance novel and that's where I get most of um, the paper to embellish the front and the back of the what's gonna go in the inside of the clock like what you guys are gonna actually see um, so gluing my chipboard down adding my paper and I'm gonna be also doing um, some other kind of uh, embellishing on this with some papers to just give us some dimension I wanted it to kind of look like there's little notes um, kind of sticking out of it but as you guys are going to see throughout this video I went through a lot of different kind of um, ideas as I was kind of working through it it was kind of like an evolution if you will um, I started with one uh, frame of mind and by the time that I was done it looked completely different than what I had originally thought it was going to look like but still nonetheless I think it came out absolutely beautiful um, I'm super 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 like happy with the end result of how it came out um, so here I did some fuzzy cutting and again I'm just kind of getting you know different layers uh, to add to this because again this is going to be the inside this is going to be our focal point um, <clears throat> this is where all the other inside layers are going to kind of uh, you know rest on so I wanted this to have like a little bit of dimension all on its own now as most of you guys know that have been to my channel before whenever I do these kinds of projects I always like to add um, some type of a tea light some type of a light source so that you can go ahead and light it up at night and um, this is no different so with this altar clock I'm also going to be incorporating a little bit of a tea light on the back well it's not really a little bit of a tea light the tea light itself is actually pretty large um, but it's the ones that I have because I, I got like a mass haul at one point in time and I got like a whole bunch of tea lights I don't have as many left anymore because I've added tea lights to everything um, but they're a little bit on the larger scale you can do this also with um, different kinds of like uh, LED lights and stuff like that but um, I used what I had available and that's pretty much what I had available so as you guys can see now I'm gonna start adding some of these layers and I'm adding just some little pop dots here and there to add some dimension and also allow me the ability to kind of stick things um, you know behind it and in between it uh, again just to create this illusion of you know depth and layers working with this piece was not the easiest but um, pretty much you see that it's not impossible 
by the time that you guys get to see the whole full result you're gonna be like okay so this is definitely something that you could do like if you're in a thrift store um or even if you decide to purchase these um these clocks this is a twin bell clock it ran for about a little less than six dollars but you'll have to do some shopping around to see um if you can get it for less and i didn't pay any shipping on it um i also have the tim hall clocks which i will be doing a live stream and i will be doing a giveaway um with the altered tim hall clock but i wanted to more or less give myself a run through and see if these that i purchased as an alternate were you know are are good enough to alter and um you know i wanted to get a, an idea for how much space and stuff like that so pretty much what you guys see me here is i'm kind of just again just rummaging through different things um collecting different elements getting different pieces just trying to see what's going to work what's not going to work um i end up going through a whole different process a whole different like um assortment of stuff i i go from a to z um and it ends up actually like i said looking really different than what i had originally intended it to um so i left this part in because i wanted you guys to kind of just you know maybe it gives you some ideas um as far as how you can do yours if that's something that you're trying to do um plus just to also kind of let you know that we kind of go through this process at times and that's quite all right don't give up on what you're working on um and just keep pushing through it if you have to let it go for a little while then let it go but you know definitely come back to it i did that a couple times throughout this project um this took me a couple days to finish in total from when i started just because i kept going to it and, and you know having to step away from it and coming back to it and stepping away from it um just to kind of gather my thoughts and see like you know really where i wanted this to kind of go how i wanted this to kind of look so now you're going to see me kind of gessoing everything because even though this has a nice um painting on it which you can actually leave and it'll be perfectly fine like that um i wanted to do a little bit more on it so i'm going to give it a quick little just i'm going to prime it with some gesso both on the inside and the outside i also wanted to coat the cardboard ring that i added to that just to make sure that it's nice and sturdy um and also to allow it to absorb you know colors and just things that i'm going to be adding to it i'm also going to be doing some texture paste and i pretty much the texture paste throughout the entire uh clock and what i use is crackle paste um so pretty much you allow it to dry on its own or you can you know uh, speed it up by drying it but if you allow it to dry on its own it'll actually give you a uh, way better result um way better crackle so i will do this and just kind of leave it overnight um and i did this throughout the entire piece um over everything you'll see later on that i also end up doing it to the back um just to make the whole thing kind of look kind of uniform um and give it the same kind of weathered um and vintagey kind of look in a way um even though the colors that i end up using are not so vintagey per se but they are uh they are in a way they are they they kind of remind me of something that's been underwater for a really really long time so i thought that that was cool <laughs> so just adding a little bit of gesso to my um to my little base that i'm going to be putting on the top um just so you know just playing around again i'm this whole process with me just like with everything else if you guys have ever caught any of my live streams um you you know that i kind of pull out a whole bunch of different things and some things i use some things i don't use i like to allow the creativity to kind of flow um even though i have an idea the idea is not necessarily a plan um i just have like a glimpse if you will in my mind of okay this is what i think i want it to look like um but the evolution is a being you know it, it takes its own course as you start adding things and you start seeing how things really do either complement each other or don't complement each other so for the most part that's kind of how this went so as you see i've covered the entire thing i've added a little bit of crackle paste um all, all over all over everything and i work mainly on the base for right now and then later on i will do the same thing and apply the crackle paste you know on the on the back and i think i also apply it on the little bells on top and everything like that so now i'm working on the tea light now i knew that this tea light was like humongous so i'm like okay do i really want this thing like coming out of the back but at the end i didn't really have much of a choice so i end up using it so what i'm doing is i'm gonna um, punch out a little hole that's about the right diameter so that i can feed uh the little light now with the tea light um it had like this uh plasticky flame looking kind of thing most of you guys will probably know exactly what i'm talking about so i removed that um 
I found that it was too super bright though so um, once I get this all done you guys are gonna see that I end up actually um, trying to conceal some of the light not all of the light just some of the light because when I turned it on it was like blinding like it was so so bright it was kind of blinding um, and you wouldn't be able to really see like all the details and stuff like that just because it was so so bright um, in the video you guys can't really see it that well but it's like having a laser pointed at your eyes <laughs> um, so I had to kind of you know uh, work around that a little bit and I end up doing that and um, fixing that so everything is kind of dry now um, and again I'm just kind of flowing through different elements just pulling out um, metal embellishments I'm putting out flowers and I'm thinking okay I'm gonna you know and I really liked this idea originally um, I actually made a hole in the back of the flower and I'm like okay I'm just gonna set this flower there but then it's like I at the end of the day I guess I didn't really like it as much um, maybe for something a little bit wider or a little bit bigger that would have been okay the flower was so big um, I'm trying to show you guys that there's like you know crackling all over everything um, from the crackle paste and stuff um, but yeah the the flower ended up being so big um, you know and with the diameter and everything and I was just like I'm not really feeling it I'm not really liking it so um, I end up moving throughout this whole thing I keep trying to incorporate flowers because again that's where my mind was like I'm, I want to incorporate a whole bunch of flowers I want to just do you know um, I see so many beautiful like Prima Finnebear type, um, you know, altar clocks and the Tim Holt altar clocks, and so many people do such a beautiful, beautiful job with them. And um, the ones that I always end up finding myself fascinated by the most are the ones that end up having, like, you know, this beautiful kind of uh, cascade of flowers and things like that. But it didn't work out like that for me. <laughs> I did get to use um, a flower or two here and there, but nothing too, too major. Um, no cascading of flowers. Um, I actually end up going for gears. Oops, sorry, but that is uh, eBay notifying me of some stuff. <laughs> some stuff they have shipped out. So I do apologize for that. Um, so more as I end up going with gears. And even though with the gears, like I said, I'm still trying to incorporate flowers and this and that. So um, I go ahead and find uh, some gear buttons that I have. And I also pull out this Prima... Um, resin is like resin clocks and that was what I was gonna go with originally and I was like okay I like how this looks and um, once I tried on the Prima clock I was like I have a button that pretty much is ready to go I don't have to do much to it so I ended up actually going for um, the one that I have the, the little uh, gear clock that I have that is part of that um, little bundle of buttons and stuff like that so now that I kind of got an idea okay this is kind of how I want this to kind of go um, I'm still thinking okay I'm on clocks so I start pulling out like my chipboard clocks and like all different things um, and I'm just trying to see if by me putting the, the tea light by me putting a chipboard in front of the tea light is it going to create a shadow that's going to cast like on a wall or something like that um, and it did it so that was kind of me just testing that out just to see because obviously you don't want to walk into your room and be scared because you see this crazy looking shadow on your wall so I was just kind of testing that out so here I got this little box and now I'm going to do some spraying and I'm thinking okay this is how I'm going to go. I'm going to start spraying this down um, and letting some of that color kind of go through the little cracks and the little nooks and the little crannies. Um, I have these, these beautiful uh, metallic luster waxes by Deco Art and I love to incorporate these things into my art. Many of you guys that have been to my channel know that I absolutely love these things um, and they're very versatile. You can use them as watercolor. You can use them pretty much straight on like a wax. I mean, you can do so many different things with them. They go on, you know, metal, wood, all different kinds of surfaces. Um, so pretty much what I'm doing is I'm watering it down and then I'm using that like if it was, you know, like my spray, if you will. So I'm watering it down and I'm just pouring the, the shimmery, beautiful, um, you know, chocolates and blues and, and turquoise kind of colors um, and allowing them to kind of stream and also kind of brushing them on um, just to make sure that I get a nice coverage of everything. And also, you know, just to get a nice effect overall. As you guys can see, there's like colors dripping, there's, you know, blues over browns, browns over blues. I just absolutely love it. Um, and it gives it like this really ancient uh, kind of look and feel to it as well because of all the crackling that it's got and everything like that. So, but you could definitely like do um, stenciling over this and get like your modeling paste and do some stenciling over it. Like there's so many different ways that you can alter these things. Like it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so let your imagination soar 
just pull out a whole bunch of different things and just start adding whatever works and remember if you don't like something you can do one of two things you can either take it off or just all over it so there's there's no reason to just toss it you can just put it to the side and just come back to it with a fresh mind maybe a nice cup of coffee and um <laughs> get it kind of going so i'm just trying to show you um how the texture kind of looks uh it's kind of marbly in some places and um i just really really love the complement of, br of brown with blue um it looks to me super amazing it's very earthy um and i absolutely love it so i think what i'm going to be doing now is okay let's see yes i got this little wooden uh chipboard frame little wooden frame and I grabbed a little piece of lace um, and I'm gonna be gluing that onto the back of that and even though I know some of these some of the details you really won't get to see too too well because again I'm layering on top of layering on top of layering at the end of the day it's always a nice touch to put them in there either way because you really never know what is gonna peak and what's not gonna peak what you're gonna be able to see and what you're not gonna be able to see so I'm gluing down my gears and again just trying to figure out okay how I want this to lay what do I want to include on this? What do I not want to include on this? So I start kind of going with this whole uh, kind of button feel. And um, if you saw previously, I took a, a metal key and I uh, pretty much threaded some string through it. So I kind of end up adding that in there as well and just kind of tucking in uh, the thread, you know, behind all the other elements. I found this cute little metal that says be free and I thought that that was absolutely perfect for this. Um, because eventually I, I will end up adding like a little bird and stuff like that to it so I went ahead and did that um, added that to there as well so like I was saying earlier I am going to be doing um, at some point during the summer before the summer is over probably sooner rather than later um, I am going to actually end up doing one of the Tim Holtz clocks and I think probably towards the end of my summer canvas uh, giveaway series which is something that I'm doing um, for the summer so these are like really fun um, you know kind of summery type if you will uh, very bright colors pastels and stuff like that um, you know kind of colors that's kind of what I'm going for as far as like the summer canvas um, the summer canvases that I've been creating every Saturday so if you haven't checked that out definitely stop by and check that out um, we're in the year 2018 just in case anybody is watching this you know sometime in the future hello future people um <laughs> but for the most part um i'm trying to i'm gonna see if i can do this like more often um i really do enjoy you know creating the canvases and definitely i i super enjoy giving them away to you guys so um i'm gonna be doing the same thing with the with the clock not this one i don't think i'm not sure yet i'm not sure <laughs> we'll see we'll see um if i end up giving this one away i'm not i'm not sure yet um because I do have more that I can always make others. Um, I, I ended up kind of buying like six pieces. Three Tim Holtz and three of these Foo Foo Clocks. <laughs> Every time I say that name I laugh because it's just so crazy sounding. Um, <laughs> it sounds cheap and the thing is that it's really not cheaply made. The clock is actually really, 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 really well made. Um, surprisingly so. Uh, it's a nice sturdy uh, metal. Like you can drop it and it probably won't even dent. Like it's really nice. Um, it's really well made. So... I've got some of my gears going and um, here again I'm just adding different colors just implementing golds and stuff like that I will also go ahead and implement a little bit of gesso here and there um, the back as you see it now on top of the clock with the sealer that's not gonna stay like that either I will be changing that up moving forward um, I'm gonna do a little bit of light stamping on the frame just to give it a little bit of you know something something um, but again between all the different layers and stuff like that once you put it once you put it inside it's you can't really see everything for everything but um more or less i'm just making sure that my light is still able to be where i need it to be and it's not going to push the light out um which it doesn't um i also found this really adorable stick pin that was gifted to me um by one of my dear subscribers here on my channel and i i also introduced that into the piece as well i thought it was super super cute i love how she pretty much put it together with a little flower and everything like that super super cute so thank you so much tanya because this definitely definitely uh helped me out when it came to this piece right here um so more or less kind of tucking in the string now and i'm going to be gluing that in place so that it doesn't you know fall all over the place and yeah let's see what am i doing now 
all right so now i'm going to start assembling because now i'm getting ready to kind of glue some of these things together so um before you go too far into the process of um you know adding everything in you definitely need to start kind of assembling your clock and as you can see my thing kind of fell apart there so i was like oh no but um i glued it and i fixed it and it's perfectly fine now so i'm gonna go ahead and glue this and set this um and just make sure that everything is copacetic and i'm gonna leave this dry for a while whenever you're working with glue especially if you're going to be adding any wet mediums and stuff like that just make sure that you allow your things to thoroughly dry before you move on to you know the wet stage where you're adding sprays this that and the third um making sure that everything is still kind of working and yay it's still kind of working <laughs> so um the batteries on the back of this are totally totally replaceable which is why i like these kinds of tea lights because i can always replace the lights um but i just need to find some that are a little bit flatter smaller i have to look for that I know that they have them um, I just have to look the ones I've had these things for years so they probably you know have updated the technology by now <laughs> so once I took everything apart like the little bell part the, the part that rings the bells obviously I have nothing to attach that to because that was attached to the the inner workings of the clock so I end up kind of bending the base um, I opened it up made it flat and then I kind of glued it on there um, that gave me a little bit of an issue but I was able to kind of get it together at some point by clipping it together um, and just allowing it to really really thoroughly dry which I definitely had to do because in the process of me trying to work through it I kept knocking it down so I'm assembling everything and like I said there's just a lot of little bolts and things like that that you have to kind of screw on here and there um, I used a set of jewelry pliers to kind of get it all together um, and it's a good thing that I have like the other one because I can go back to it and see like how it's supposed to go I wasn't really sure for a second I was like wait a minute am I doing this right I'm like where am I supposed to put this handle so I kind of figured that out which was good what a relief um, and I just pretty much have to screw everything together so that's you know that's the easy part is just getting everything kind of screwed in together and yeah now be careful when you're handling pliers <laughs> I don't know if some of you guys have seen the little brown uh, I have a little brown dot on one of my fingers because I clipped the bejesus out of my finger the other day um, and I was literally walking around with a stiff finger for a couple of days um, until it kind of healed up and you know it's getting there it doesn't hurt anymore at least thank God for that um, but yeah so like I said I keep fumbling with uh, the little the little knocker thing and um, also a quick little tip when you're working with uh, these kinds of surfaces that are like glass like surfaces um, a good idea is not to brush on the gesso but to kind of stipple it um, you can use a sponge you can use like a, a stencil brush like I was using there but you want to create texture you need it to grab on and you you need it to be able to grab on to not just the layer that's under but the layer that's gonna go over it so I've um, I've noticed that when I do it that way um, it actually doesn't fall off meanwhile when I've brushed it on as it dries it can crackle and fall off so um, when you're just sewing these kind of surfaces just you know use a sponge or just um, you know kind of dap it don't brush it on just dap it you know um, and create texture it doesn't have to be like you know a lot of texture just a little bit of texture that'll help it to grip on a little bit better so obviously because I'm using my clock in the reverse um, it was not the way that it was designed it wasn't for it to you know sit like that to stand like that I mean so I ended up having to um, find kind of a solution for uh, allowing it to kind of rest on its back which used to be the front <laughs> so um, I end up finding this little picture frame it's like a little heart picture frame it has this, it already has like the little um, stand for it to be able to just kind of rest um, you know lean back if you will without happening over so I end up trying to glue it in place but unfortunately because it's paper on paper on paper it didn't really want to hold down too well so somewhere down moving forward I will end up actually um, hot gluing it so just bypass what you see me doing here with the glue and go straight to your hot glue um, and do it that way <laughs> or you can try E6000 that'll definitely work but um, just because it has so much wet stuff and I guess the paper itself wasn't so strong and the clock is so top heavy I mean the clock is heavy because again we're starting with a really heavy metal um, so the clock itself is heavy so it just kept falling forward <laughs> because forward it was backwards so it's supposed to lean back so um, but yeah but that wasn't too bad you know I was able to, to kind of work around that and fix that I, I literally sat there and looked at this clock for like two hours thinking how the heck 
now that I've done all this work, I, ne I didn't even think about that. I'm like, how the heck am I now going to stop you from falling on your face? <laughs> I'm about to glue a, a piece of glass in front of you. How am I going to stop you from falling forward once I add even more weight to the front of the clock? But by adding the little, um, the little stand on the back, that actually fixed the problem. It, it helped everything out. Um, and so I was thinking, okay let's make it a shaker let's add some sequins in here let's make it fun let's make it glittery let's make it this let's make it that um so i started thinking about adding all of these different things in there so you see me kind of trying to work you know through a mix and getting it all in there and i'm like yeah i'm gonna do this but then i looked at it and i'm like no this is not that kind of clock so i'm like okay so let's try brown <laughs> and i'm like no this is not that kind of clock so I end up bypassing that and again just I'm leaving these things in there because I like for you guys to see the you know the process um, of what I go through um, not just to make the things that I end up giving away but just what I go through in general um, I always say that I am the kind of person that I tend to think a little bit on the backward side even though when you think about it if I thought backwards then I would have the solution before I started <laughs> but um, usually that's not the case but I do end up kind of going you know up the hill and keep continuing to go up the hill before i start kind of coming down the hill like oh okay okay getting to easier um you know land if you will um but moving on to this i found some uh chain like a broken chain and i'm like oh this will look super cool and i like that the colors it was like a little sea moss kind of color um and the pearls were like really really cute on it um, well, another part but the beads were really, really cute on it, and it, and it had like this nice, um, little rustic kind of chain uh, to it. And I'm like, oh, this will look super cool. How can I incorporate this in here? Um, because again, I like to use, you know, I like to use a, a random assortment of different things. Like you'll find anything from like, part of my French, but crap, <laughs> it's a good stuff. Like I mix it all together. Um, so I end up kind of going into that and 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 adding that in there as well. Now to cover the bolts right because aesthetically speaking i didn't really like the look of these silver bolts just kind of coming you know from the top and from the bottom so i end up kind of um gluing uh some more gears and i thought that that even made it look even better because it made it look like the inner workings of a clock like for real for real you have gears everywhere and everything is kind of working together um in order to give you time <laughs> so i went ahead and added the rest of the gears um i added i think three in total i added two on one side one on the other i didn't want to overwhelm it too much because again i have that little um tag in the inside that says be free and i didn't want to cover that up so i'm using these little tweezers which i wish i had tiny tiny hands it would have been a hundred times better than these little this little tweezer because it kept spinning it and just uh was a pain but i got it i got it together so I kind of, I'm gluing these little things in there. I'm also going to add a little white um, Tim Holtz resin flower, one of those little resin roses. I'm going to add that in there as you guys can see. Um, I also went ahead and added some other little flowers in there as well. In the bottom, what you see are um, two little chipboard, well actually wood, um, wood veneer hearts. Um, and that's pretty much what I did in the bottom. I added some crackle paste to them just to make a match with the rest of the theme and then I went ahead and added some rich espresso which is the metallic luster color um, of the brown that you see me using throughout this piece so I wanted to use a bird um, because again to me um, birds and freedom like soaring high and just being able to go and do uh, to me that and birds are like you know that's the life of a bird if you will um, unless it's hunting season, which hopefully it isn't in this part of the woods. So um, I went ahead and added some different colors like gold and this and that, um, you know, white frost. And I think I add also some orange. Um, what is it called? Oops. I don't have it here. I know I add lavish green. Um, I add a little bit of cosmic blue. Is that a cosmic blue? Yeah, it's yeah cosmic blue. I see it there. I added some green I added some orange the orange one is called orange flicker um, beautiful beautiful color um, but I didn't want to overwhelm it too much I just wanted it to have a nice little subtle shine and I think I'm not sure if I end up showing you guys or if I showed you guys I was looking for the thing when it popped up so um, just kind of trying to figure out exactly how I want this 
and that's kind of um, how I'm setting this up so this the inside of it is pretty much ready to go I didn't want to do too much to the inside because I didn't want to overwhelm it too too much by adding so much stuff that you kind of lost the entire point of the background so I wanted you guys to still be able to see that background and um, you know be able to enjoy it especially when you turn the tea light on I didn't want it to be like everything kind of overwhelming it to the point that you couldn't even see the light you couldn't even see the background so here I am using the embellishment glue which I love this glue unfortunately it's not so easy to find anymore um, but I used what I had left and um, this is a really good glue especially for for gluing down glass I've used it before on glass and, sh and have shipped things out and everything stays in its place so I absolutely love it now while this one is um, while this one is glue <laughs> while this glue is wet I'm also gonna go ahead and incorporate um, the, some of the remnants of this chain that I have um, and I thought what a what a nice way to kind of frame the dome itself and hide um, you know where the the glass meets the cardboard so on and so forth and um, I also had already created another piece I probably showed it already um, where I kind of chained uh, a butterfly like a butterfly charm and I'm gonna be incorporating that as well on the side which you guys will see me do at some point uh, towards the end of this video and we're almost nearing the end you guys we're almost nearing the end so to embellish this um because the chain didn't quite all the way go around i went ahead and grabbed myself some more of those really pretty um resin flowers from tim holtz and i glued those you know on the little gap that i had there and now i'm just trying to see like what else i want to add like i could have added so so many things but sometimes i like my things to be a little bit more on the simpler side um and i like for the painting um the texture and all of those things to actually become the embellishment if you will I don't know if that makes sense um, but I wanted all of that work that I did on the painting and the coloring and just the texturizing of the whole thing I wanted that to kind of speak um, and take the place of all the extra embellishments that I could have added so here I'm adding some I believe those are organza I don't know they're mulberry flowers from Thailand um, and they're just kind of loose little flowers so I grabbed some white ones and I'm just kind of tucking it behind um, you know where I put the roses at just to kind of again secure it more also give it a little cute dash of embellishment because I really wanted flowers on here but um I settled for the next best thing so that's fine I think overall I gave it a really cute um, you know a cute little detail and again not too too much not too overwhelming um, and it lets you kind of focus on the inside and at the same time it allows you to admire the outside at least you know in my opinion so here I'm dangling the little charm on the side and I'm gonna glue that butterfly right on there and I just think it gave it the cutest little touch um, kind of like a pocket watch without being a pocket watch because imagine walking in the streets with this thing in your pocket like geez <laughs> it's kind of big um, but yeah so I pretty much secured that as well as I possibly could um, and I found this tiny little birdie and I'm like oh this will look cute to sit in right on top of um, where the roses are so I painted that gold just to kind of go with uh, the gold of the butterfly and I am gonna glue that in there make sure that that's nicely in place and I'm just gonna tuck another little flower here and there I think and um, the last thing that I'm gonna be working on when it comes to this is actually the back so I did put up some pictures on my Instagram if you guys um, are not following me then definitely go make sure you check that out and show me some insta love it's at design elemental um, so design elemental that's my uh, Instagram name so definitely go make sure you check me out um, and you you'll be able to see like the pictures for this project and stuff like that so And if you haven't checked out my live streams, then definitely check me out on Saturdays. Um, I usually go on either 6 o'clock. Lately, I've been going on at 7. Um, so it's either between 6 or 7, but whenever I'm going to be late, you'll see that I put like uh, a little notification on my channel. If you're subscribed to me and you've hit that bell, then you'll get that notification. Um, and it'll let you know exactly when I'm going to be going live. And most of the time, at least for, the, for this whole month, this whole summer, um, I'm going to be doing canvas giveaways. They're 8 by 10 canvases um, that I pretty much go to town on and just do all kinds of fun crazy things too um and anybody that's participating could be a winner okay. 
so i found some filigree and i'm like i gotta do something with this tea light this thing looks just look too crazy and it's bad enough that i have this thing that looks like a book bag on the back of the clock so i have to kind of you know decorate it somehow right i gotta do something to kind of spruce it up so i found some more filigrees that i have there and i kind of bent them into the shape so that i can have them kind of curve around the tea light and that way at least it'll give it a little bit of you know detail it'll do something for it so this is late in the night already so i think it's like two in the morning <laughs> i'm still working on this thing and um, i'm gonna go ahead and gesso it and then i'm gonna add some crackle paste and i'm gonna let this kind of set overnight and then the next image that you're gonna see well the next part of this clip that you're gonna see is when it's all dry and it's ready to go and i'm using my handy dandy little silicone brush by finnebear absolutely love this thing it is a charm to work with when it comes to adding you know these kinds of things and just sp um, sp um, spreading everything out and smoothing everything out super awesome and then with all the little nicks and crannies i can get so i'm just using my stencil brush So just kind of adding all of that in there and now i'm gonna go in with my crackle paste and luckily i found a jar that was pretty much still three-thirds full so i was like yay i have more <laughs> so i went ahead and added that because i kind of um emptied out my other jar but luckily i found another one so i'm kind of going over that and all the edges i'm kind of filling in all of the edges um of where the two pieces meet just to make it nice and flush um and that's what's awesome about this paste as well it's nice and thick so I can definitely just use that to kind of seal off everything all the way around and you wouldn't even know that I used paper to cover that up by the time I'm done. Um, it looks really um, seamless uh, and it came out really, 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 really nice. I, I love it. I love it. So I'm adding that pretty much everywhere just, you know, spreading the love nice and evenly. Um, and I'm going to allow this to kind of dry and then the next clip is going to be me showing you what it looks like in the morning and I wrote it on the top just in case crackle paste I know my little chicken scratch so here we are and as you can see it crackled up nicely I'm so super happy I love this product um 90% of the products that I used here like when it comes to uh, mediums and paints and stuff like that are all products by Deco Art that you can find on decoart.com and you can visit their shop or you can just google them a lot of stores carry them like joanne's michael's and all the different kinds of stores uh, carry their awesome products so you can get a nice variety of just different things um, that you can use and um, again just going with the same color scheme that i did which was um, the brown the blue and the turquoise um, and i'll list the colors down below in case you're interested in finding these specific tones uh, or colors then you'll find them down below so that you can know what to search for and what to keep your eye out for now this is pretty much almost done and like i said i i didn't really get the chance to incorporate pictures into this video itself um but hopefully you'll go over to my instagram and check that out so that you can go ahead and um, see you know the closer pictures and stuff like that of what i created and definitely leave me your comments down below i would love to hear what you think about this um I have um, some ideas in mind for what I want to create the Tim Holtz clock in but I would love to hear from you what you would like for me to um, kind of you know how how and what theme would you like for me to kind of alter uh, the Tim Holtz clock that I'm going to be giving away because eventually it will be going to one of you guys so I would love to hear what you guys would like to see me kind of do with that um, and yes uh, you know share with me your feedback now when I was dripping this paint um, some of it got onto the white little flowers and i was like no but then it kind of gave me an idea and i was like okay i'll just splash some paint on it so i ended up kind of splashing some of the watercolors uh well it's watercolor now after i've diluted it but i ended up kind of splashing some of that as well on the front so again just adding all the different colors that i use just to keep it all um you know all the same and i really like the dripping effects of it so i kind of um you know get it nice and wet really loose and then I just kind of squeeze my brush against the edges and allow it to kind of just travel, um, you know, travel along and land however it wants to land. So let's see here. Yes, here's when I start kind of uh, spritzing some of the water. 
um so pretty much this video is done so thank you thank you so so much for watching i so greatly greatly appreciate all the love all the support if you haven't subscribed please do definitely give this video a thumbs up if you like it if you want to see more projects like this definitely let me know and um if you haven't hit that bell hit that bell have an awesome awesome day and there goes my phone letting me know it's time to go so thank you all so much for watching and i will catch you on the next one